guys, did you hear about that insane neo-Nazi demonstration in Poland that gathered 60,000 people? Why, it turns out that the entire country is racist. And I know this because I read it on Twitter and the mainstream media. They're all complaining about this normalized fascism. And you can't doubt the media, right? Everybody knows that only paranoid racists are suspicious of the mainstream media. Whether it's major English-speaking outlets such as the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, The Independent, The Guardian, Al Jazeera, or major Swedish outlets like Göteborgs Posten, Dagens Nyheter, Expressen, Aftonbladet, Metro, they're all saying the same thing. Large right-wing extremist demo in Warsaw. It's kind of Donald Trump's fault. Under banners demanding a white Europe and a Muslim Holocaust, 60,000 extremists marched together in Poland. Why, I even got some pictures. Look at this. Look at these terrible Nazis. They look so white and dangerous. Yeah. C -c can, you, can, you, can you see? C can you see how, how oppressive they are? Huh? Look at that little girl. That's pure evil right there. Oh, 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 oh man. <sighs> this is precisely why we hate the mainstream media, because we can't trust them on anything. The media coverage on Poland's independence march has been utterly insane, disgusting, and deeply offensive. The media narrative is that Poland is the nation holding the biggest Nazi rally in the world. A country where 60,000 fascists can gather together with no resistance and complete support by the government, the Polish media, and the Polish people. But the actual reality is that 60,000 of those demonstrators are just peaceful ordinary people. Only 500 of them are estimated to be Nazis. 500! That's it! Add to this the fact that the average Pole probably hates these dumb Nazis because they are traitors to their own people. What are they even doing at this parade? If you are a Polish nationalist, then you would never raise a swastika. Because if you have any clue about Poland's history, you know that fighting Nazis is part of how they gained that independence to begin with. A Polish Nazi is an oxymoron. Per logic, such a thing shouldn't even exist. Hitler viewed Slavs as subhumans. And if there's any country that has suffered at the hands of Nazis, it is Poland. And if there's any country with a reason to celebrate independence, it is Poland. So how dare you pull this bullshit media narrative? Do you have any idea how offensive this is to the victims of the Holocaust? Of which Poles were many? Sweden's Minister of Justice and Interior and the former Minister of Migration and Public Health, who's been in Parliament for almost 10 years now, took to Twitter to call Poland Nazis for celebrating their independence, when this guy's own party actually helped the Nazis. The Social Democrats, backed by all other Swedish parties at the time established an institute for race studies in Uppsala in 1922, 12 years before Hitler came to power. The Social Democrats banned magazines that were critical of Nazi Germany. They allowed German soldiers to travel the Swedish railroads. Sweden sold the Nazis large quantities of iron so that they can make weapons. In fact, the Swedish iron trade is said to have extended the war by several months because it was so crucial to the Nazis fighting power. And let's not forget the Swedish concentration camps, which were used to host dissidents such as left-wingers and Nazi critics. Put simply, this leftist minister's party alone have done way worse things than all the Polish people put together. So shut the fuck up. Up. One of the speakers at this nationalist march is a war veteran and a former prisoner at a concentration camp. How dare you insinuate that he is a Nazi? I mean, even when the pretty boy feminist hunk Justin Trudeau has bigger balls and respect than Sweden, you really gotta wonder where you went wrong. 68% of the Polish people are happy with their government. In Sweden, only 22% of people are happy with their government. 
government. Whatever Poland is doing, it's clearly working out for them. So why don't you get off your high horse and just take it easy with the criticism, okay? Don't try to lecture anyone. Because your government not only has a worse history with Nazism, it also has a record in low public trust rating. And of course, worth mentioning in this context is that Poland hasn't had a single Muslim terrorist attack. I wonder why. Funny how the racist countries seem a lot more safer than the multicultural ones. Our tolerant and anti-racist Western politicians are telling us that we have to accept a future where terrorist attacks is part of our everyday lives. Whereas Poland's politicians have a bit more respect for their people than that. When 70% of the Polish population say that they don't want to accept refugees because of the problems it has brought other countries, their government listens. And that is why Western politicians and journalists are smearing Poland. Because they don't want to see this power relation in their countries as well. Since they hate people, they don't want to listen to us. They just want to lecture us on how filthy and racist we are. All the Polish march really is, is just a European equivalent to Americans 4th of July. A simple get-together to celebrate national independence. But the Western globalist media want to take a healthy patriotic expression and turn it into thought crime. It is so blatantly obvious that they have an agenda, because you just don't reach this level of intellectual dishonesty by mistake. 500 Nazis, and you think that represents a whole country? Just look at this guy. He says, Poland's Independence Day march was hijacked by fascists. The organizers don't seem too bothered by that, nor do the police, and most of those attempts were not fascist. But the biggest problem is that these people did not react against the fascists. Yeah, you kinda cracked your own mystery there, Bob. Most in attendance weren't fascists. So how was it hijacked by fascists? 500 shouting morons isn't a takeover, it's a minor nuisance. The only few people that care about these Nazis is the media. Everyone else will just see a few bad apples for what they are. And of course the people attending didn't react against the fascists. This was a peaceful march consisting of families, women, children and old people. Why would they start a fight with hooligans? People are there to have fun and focus on the positive. They're not there to fight a minority of hopeless idiots. It's literally less than 10% of the people who were in attendance. And the Polish government has done plenty to object. They publicly reject racist and anti-Semitic views, and even publicly objected to Richard Spencer's visit to Poland. Which makes sense, because what the hell is Richard Spencer doing there anyway? His opinions are offensive to nationalists. Spencer doesn't even believe in national identity. He's pro-European Union. The guy basically just wants an all-white New World Order. And after the Polish government statement, even the Wall Street Journal themselves have gone back on their article, saying that it gives off the wrong image. But the problem with this is that the damage is already done. Since not as as many people are gonna read this tweet as they did the original article, and since every other media already has copied off their mistake. That's journalism for you today, copy-pasting someone else's bullshit. And it leads to ignorant tweets like this. Fascists become the public face of Poland's November 11th Independence Day. Something is seriously wrong in Europe's economic success story. No, something is seriously wrong with the media for taking a handful of Nazis and turning them into the face of Poland. Why would you give a small group of idiots that much power, influence, and publicity? Stop making stupid people famous. And you know, it's really weird. Here in Sweden, the media has really pushed the fact that a puny 20 Swedish radicals traveled to join the demo. Why would you even make a big deal out of that? Why are you taking a measly 20 Swedish radicals and tying them to a harmless Polish patriot march? What's the point? Well, 
Clearly, you're trying to create negative associations. See, what makes Poland so dangerous is that they are smart enough to learn from Sweden, Germany, Belgium, and France. After being occupied twice, both by communists and Nazis, they don't feel like being occupied for a third time by Islamists and globalists. Poland has figured out that you can be humanitarian and help refugees without allowing mass immigration to replace your people and your culture. You can help refugees refugees without illegal immigration. You can focus on the root of the problem, which is the instability of war-torn countries, instead of focusing on the symptoms. Allowing tens of thousands of migrants into your country does not help Syria. This is why Western politicians don't like Poland, because the European Union has made it clear that mass immigration is about replacing European people. Peter Sutherland, who is the UN migration chief, says that the purpose of the contemporary migration policy is to destroy homogeneity, meaning there's too many white people in Europe. It is also about importing cheap labor to make private corporations richer, as well as strengthening the economy by making sure that the population doesn't decrease. It is not about helping refugees. They are simply pawns. Only a few percent of refugees actually make it out of their country. The absolute majority are left behind in a war-torn country. You do not help that country country by importing a few percent of their population someplace else. When it comes to humanitarian disasters, we need to think larger. We need to think more like the Dalai Lama, who says that in the long run, Europe cannot become an Arab country. In the long run, migrants will have to return home. That's the most stable long-term solution. Is this icon of peace and enlightenment really a hardcore racist evil Nazi? I don't think so. Kryzys migracyjny został spowodowany przez nieodpowiedzialne działania niektórych liderów państw. Na przykład kanclerz Niemiec wyraźnie zaprosiła tych ludzi do Niemiec i kiedy okazało się, że tych ludzi przybyło no bardzo, bardzo wielu, wtedy pojawiła się koncepcja, jak podzielić się emigrantami zwanymi uchodźcami z innymi państwami, a więc narzucąskie jest bezcenne. Oczywiście trzeba pomagać, jesteśmy chrześcijanami, pomagamy, rząd polski pomaga, pomagamy na miejscu. Ta pomoc jest najlepiej zaadresowana, jest najbardziej efektywna. Polish people marched because their country is safe and heading towards a bright future, whereas Sweden is being raped, plagued by bombings and Sharia police growing in suburban ghettos. Poland is a nation that has no respect for neither Nazism or communism. They have a history of oppression with both these disgusting ideologies and therefore you can't really shit on them, can you? Calling them racist doesn't work because they've seen what radical left-wing bullshit does and they've seen what actual racism does. To Poland, globalization is just a multicultural version of history. Hitler's Germanization. Countries like Poland, Japan, and Hungary are a threat towards globalism and the failed project of multiculturalism. They are an inspiration to other countries and living proof that there is a way to turn back the negative development in Europe. And that is why Western journalists and politicians will sink so low to promote this offensive media narrative. They will lie about Poland, just like they lied about Trump and just like they lied lied about Brexit, trying to make us believe that we are just a fringe. No, we are the people. The uncomfortable truth, which is hard to navigate and hard for some people to swallow, is that the alternative to globalism and multiculturalism is not white nationalism. It is not racism. It is not genocide. There is a reasonable middle ground where you can love your own people and preserve your own culture without being racist, without being hateful towards others, while helping refugees. I'm supposed to be this evil Nazi bigot, but I do my part and give to UNICEF like everyone else should. Because helping where it hurts the most is what we all should be focusing on more. We can all learn a lot from Poland. Politics is supposed to be about representing the people. That is something that the Western elite of journalists and politicians seems to have forgotten. Nazdrowie!